Hey, this is David with Haggerty and our Redline Rebuild Series. We are back on our 1950 Chevy pickup truck. Last time we went through and reassembled the transmission and the rear differential, and now we're on to the rear drum brakes and subsequently the front drum brakes. Um, but today I thought I'd walk through real quick, just kind of some bits and pieces. Now we did do a very detailed drum brake, how do they work type function. Uh, on our 1969 Camaro. Uh, go ahead and refer to that over here. But here I'm gonna show you a couple little differences between the more modern 60s brakes and these 50s brakes. Now on the modern brakes, you have, um, they're self-adjusting. On the little older ones, they're non-self-adjusting, meaning when you back up or apply the park brake, they do not self-adjust for wear, meaning taking up the gap relative to the shoe to the drum. On these, you have to actually manually go in and part of the maintenance routine would be to self, or not self adjust, manually adjust the uh, brake cylinders so the, that brake is taken up and uh, you have a nice firm pedal. So just general components here on this one. Uh, you know, in a, a grand scheme of things, everything works off a pivot and a push. So you have a fixed pivot on these particular parts down here in the center. Um, and then you have your push, which is your master cylinder, and that pushes these pads out. Uh, this is the park brake assembly. It does basically the same thing. It has a cable, though, that pulls. And as it pulls, it pushes out or transfers out and pushes out the uh, shoes to, to hit the drums. Now, this has a little bit more claptrap to it than some. So in this you have, they basically made an extension off of the shoe. It must have been cheaper to stamp out a bunch of these other extra pieces and clamp them instead of having, a, and having one common shoe. Then you have these, that the, these will clamp together. And then you have one main pivot pin here that goes through. Subsequently, this goes over to the other side. Now, one thing I ran into with this, so I've, all I've done from restoration standpoint, I had to have my shoes relined, so I sent these down, had, um, had them relined as far as new linings onto the old core, which was pretty typical in the day. And, uh, and then I got, I had my, I just took my, uh, these pieces, I don't know what you wanna call these, extensions, I guess, uh, I just sandblasted them and shot some paint on them. So instead of looking like this, now they look like this. Just kind of clean things up. I want to make sure all my pivot points are good. And then the other thing I ran into as a slight snag are these are the stock clips. You can see in both these two pins, styles of pins, they have this undercut in here or groove and then this would slide in and lock in place and not allow the pin to just slide out. Problem being is they don't manufacture these any longer. So I had to come up with a slightly different idea. And what I looked, decided was this more common 60s horseshoe clip will be perfect here. You slide it on, pinch it together. Um, that'll solve the problem with the smaller pin. Now when I got to the bigger one, the issue I had was finding a uh, C-clip that would go on here that was the right size. Now, ironically, this is, of course, all English or standard um, dimensions, meaning it's either a three-quarter or a five-eighths. Well, it's actually neither, and a number fifth or a 15-millimeter eclip fits the best. Now, my point to all this is think outside the box. Sometimes you need to be a little more creative as far as, well, the catalog doesn't show me my part. Well, so what? Understand what the function is and, and figure out a way to, to get around it if you can't get the part. Or worst case, you could always make something. Uh, a couple of things I kicked around was actually drilling and pinning this and some things like that would have worked. Everything would have been fine. Um, but again, keep it safe, obviously. But uh, there's some other options out there. Just be a little creative with it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, just get this all assembled. We'll walk, I'll just show you it being done. I'm gonna use two kinds of uh, lubricants here. I'm just gonna use some anti-seize on anything that is a fixed 
uh, part. So in other words, it doesn't have to pivot. Uh, not that it wouldn't work on the pivots, but I have some uh, Sermalube uh, four brakes that I'm going to use as far as like on the main pivot and up here in this area and then in the slides on the on the vehicle. So anyhow, that's what that's what we're going to do. So with that, I got to get my hands dirty. I think it'll work. Kind of a little trick here. <laughs> I took a pair of these cheapy tool shop um, uh, C-clamp style vice grips, welded this pad so it doesn't pivot, just so it doesn't fight me for other reasons. Um, and then I took the pad off the other side, had a, what ultimately is a 14 millimeter wrench, a uh, nasty one laying around, old one, and welded it on here such that now, get it lined up on the back, so you're pushing the pin up, you gotta straddle this spring just enough clamp the pliers down and now you can see I have room for the clip to come in here you may have to use a screwdriver to kinda coax it a little bit Okay, so now you can see it's, it's in that groove. I'm gonna gently pull it up because I don't want it to pop out, of course. Adjust my slip joints. Not bad, hey? have our front brakes now assembled as far as all the the little extra leverage arms and spring and that's in there and fit uh, kind of learned a little lesson from the backside uh, as far as getting things a little more situated out here than struggling with it back there as much but anyhow uh, front brakes are ready to go on back brakes are done I'm gonna wait though on the front brakes and let me show you why because a I need to replace the leaf spring. Um, the other side's broke. This one was broke. Um, I have some brand new leaf springs and all the uh, stuff from LMC to attach them. So I'm going to wait on that because I don't want to have any extra mass than I have to with this here. And my kingpin is pretty well shot. So we're going to fix that while we're here. I'm going to put a brand new set of shocks on as well. But we're going to move back to the back end instead and put new shocks on it and eliminate that extra uh, helper leaf spring.
That's definitely a uh, flavor you wouldn't have of incense. Well, we got the shotgun doors out. They're cut, laying on the floor, but I got a little more work than I expected. The upper mounts are bad, so they're gonna have to cut off and put some new ones of those on. And the shackles, the bushings are completely whopped, so we need to order some parts. But that's the end of the day, no big deal. While you're waiting for us to get parts, click and subscribe. We got more videos to come, obviously, because this truck isn't done, and we have other projects, so hey, We'll see you around.